venom. Okay. Okay, we'll call the sixth regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Sue, would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Excused. Groff? Excused. Manny? Here. Montemere? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Here. Reinflesch? Here. Sigali? Here. Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Here. Wangaman? Excused. Warner? Here. Thirteen? Here. Quorum's present. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the minutes of the last Common Council meeting of June 7th be approved and that the same stand is entered on the record. And how about special one also? And from the special council meeting on Thursday also. Okay. We have a motion and a second before us that the last council meeting and the special one be approved. The minutes be approved. <coughs> Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Alderman Van Akron, would you lead us in a pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Graf wasn't here, we didn't go for it. <laughs> okay. Steve, confirmation of appointments. <clears throat> Hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Community Health Insurance Advisory Task Force, Ellen Schleicher, Jason Borden, Ed Surick, Jeff Squire, Michael Collard, <coughs> Jeff Herman, Greg Wegeman, Michael Lanzer, and a DPW union representative. Um, terms to expire 430.05, signed by the mayor. That can be put upon this passage. I move to approve the mayor's appointments. Second. Here we have a motion before us under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? <coughs> Opposed? Motion carried. I, I just note that, that that'll be subject to. Correct. Action on that 573 is the uh, actually creating that committee. The other one is uh, Michael Schrader to be considered for appointment to the Board of Contractors Examiners to fill the unexpired term of Mark Winkle, whose term expires 43006. Signed by the Mayor. That can be <coughs> I'd move to approve the Mayor's appointment. I have a motion before us in a second. Any discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Steve. Public forum. Candace Tietzen. <coughs> Candace, can you give me your name and address, please? Candace Tietzen, 1235 Indiana Avenue, Sheboygan. I know that it's on the agenda this evening. Uh, one of my bartenders is going to be died a liquor license. I am requesting that the council reconsider it due to the fact that he has improved himself within the past four years while he has been in my employment. Uh, things that he did do were in the past probably eight years ago. Also right now he's a very trusted employee which is hard to find in the liquor business and as a bartender. He's also a very hard working employee. He is working a full time job plus he works for me part time. He also is making an effort to change his life by paying his fines that were addressed where some of the things and the issues where the licensing committee is thinking that they should not grant his license. I need him because he is a good employee. So I would ask you to please reconsider denying his beverage operator's license. Thank you. Thank you. And Renee Susha. Renee Susha, 303 St. Clair Avenue. Thank you. 
Um, tonight, I'd just like to make a few comments relating to the June 17th resolution that's being voted on tonight. I'm not sure what the number is. It starts off talking about a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute amendments to the development agreement. More specifically, I would like to focus on the legal fees that will be uh, now paid by uh, Great Lakes. If you remember back to May of 2003, that's when this council or the previous council agreed that uh, they signed a, or passed a resolution saying that uh, legal fees should not exceed $120,000. Well, down the road, the legal fees uh, managed to climb about a quarter of a million above your cap. And due to the persistence of the Sheboygan Citizen Action Group questioning and filing complaints with the district attorney, um, with this common council, um, ultimately, a special audit committee was formed and looked into the problem, and um, everything initially came out looking okay. It wasn't until we heard the wisdom of Judge Willis's ruling when he stated that uh, there is no signed contract, so there is no illegal activity going on here, but he went a step further and said that the city does not have to pay this bill. He took it even a step further and said that even if the city wanted to pay this bill, uh, he quoted a state statute that points out that the finance director cannot sign a check without countersigning a contract. So uh, that kind of brings us to tonight's resolution, and I want to thank the aldermen for their negotiating skills because they turned this situation into a winning situation for everybody that's involved. The Sheboygan Citizen Action Group was right in challenging the legal fees, and they wound up saving the taxpayers almost a quarter of a million dollars. The city wins because they got Great Lakes to pay the bill for them. And Great Lakes wins because they will get the necessary changes to the development agreement by paying the bill. So in closing, I want to encourage all the aldermen to read the transcript from Judge Willis's ruling. It really did have a lot of words of wisdom in there. He's a former city attorney for Manitowoc. Um, one of the things that he pointed out is that um, a lot of things hinged on the way that the May, the way that the May 2003 resolution was written. That resolution only authorized city officials to sign a contract. And I'm sure that when the former council approved that resolution, you were all under the impression that there would be a contract signed. You didn't realize that by authorizing it, that did not mean they had to do it. Judge Willis said that it is common verbiage in resolutions to say that things are authorized and directed to happen. If you say it's a directive, it must be done. So if you take a look, at tonight's resolution, you will notice that it's another resolution only authorizing appropriate city officials to do something. And I would just like to suggest that in the future that the aldermen make sure that the proper verbiage is written very clear. It would be such a pity to waste your time in closed door sessions and at other meetings and doing research at home to come here to pass a resolution that's only authorizing something to happen, which means it might or might not. So let's make it perfectly clear. Let's see if we can try to change the image of City Hall. To a certain extent, it seems that the image of City Hall is kind of down here in the gutter, but let's put it up here where things can be done ethically, legally, and legitimately so everybody can benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, would you like to respond to that? Not really. No? Let it go? Okay. <clears throat> okay. I, I disagree. I don't think City Hall is down in the gutter. We're very, very upfront people. So I would disagree with that. Yes, we need a redevelopment authority to uh, <clears throat> call roll. All right. Call the meeting of redevelopment authority. Now we have a quorum present with the only uh, member absent being Ken Bessett, who is excused. Hold on, Stephanie. On which one on are you which going? One? Uh, 623. No, not 623. No. That's not circled right. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, 656. Okay. Do I have a second? Are there any objections to suspension of the rules for 656? Okay, none proceed. Um, would it be appropriate to take S5-1 along with it? Or do you want those as separate? Steve? That would have to be separate, I think. Okay, correct. I'd take them separate. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I guess I would move to uh, authorize ex executing a consent in connection with the proposed transfer of all interests in Blue Harbor Resort Condominium LLC. Second. We have a motion before us in a second. Under discussion. Perhaps I'll the city attorney would want to address this. Okay. Well, exactly. Yes, this is the one that was just on our desk tonight, right? Correct. Hang Correct. Hang on. Okay. on a second. Hang on a minute. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. Just a quick question, given the input uh, by a community member here. Quick question to uh, Steve, uh, Attorney uh, Clean. Do we need to say authorized and directed, or is authorized sufficient? I think authorized is sufficient. Um, if you want to make it totally mandatory so there's no discretion on whether uh, anything gets acted on, you can uh, have documents that say authorized and directed. Uh, but I think providing a little discretion sometimes is beneficial. There may be a reason why you get to closing and, and uh, you may not want to close on a particular document. And then uh, if you're directed to, you have no, no discretion in the matter. So then by saying authorizing, we could come back and look at it again. We could do whatever. We could maybe not even sign it. Is that what we're saying? Or uh, The intent would be to sign the document, yeah. But we don't have to say authorized and directed. I, I, I asked this because I think it's a very good point that was made. We always said authorized, but never said directed, as far back as I can remember. And I guess my question is, do we need to start doing that, or do we not need to start doing that? Well, my advice to the council is I don't think you need to do that. If you choose to do that, that's within the council's discretion. Uh, but I don't think it's necessary, and I think there, uh, there are situations where you're going to run into problems if you do that when uh, circumstance arises where, for some reason, it, uh, it makes sense not to uh, finalize the document. Uh, if, if uh, an official is directed to do that, uh, there's no discretion then. So uh, they would have to sign it, even if it may not be in the best interest of the city to do that at that point. Uh, so uh, I think that's why uh, you've got uh, elected city officials that uh, should have some discretion in making some of those decisions. Uh, I think you're authorized to execute the document, and it's uh, especially where it's uh, something where it says substantially in the form attached or something like that. There may be some wording change that uh, you run into the problem where uh, is that substantially in conformance with the attached document or not? If you're directed to, there's no discretion. You've got to sign the thing. Uh, if if you're authorized to and the wording changes a little different, but it's, uh, it's in the best interest of the city, uh, then you either you make that call as to whether to sign it or not. And uh, I, I think you want to give your elected officials some discretion on uh, taking final action on some of these things. So, you know, if the council doesn't wish to do that, that's your prerogative. Now, would you explain the document? Um, this is a request by Great Lakes um, to uh, change the, uh, the ownership status of the, uh, of the condominiums currently. The uh, <clears throat> condominium, Blue Harbor Resort Condominium LLC was created as a limited liability company to basically uh, build and own and sell the condominiums that are part of the Blue Harbor project um, for reasons that uh, Mr. Emery, who is the CEO of Great Lakes, per perhaps could explain uh, tonight to the council, uh, Great Lakes is requesting to change the ownership interest in the the condominiums to the uh, the principal shareholders of Great Lakes. There are seven principal shareholders who would individually own the condominium LLC, uh, the ownership interest uh, of the condominium LLC. Again, the purpose of that entity is to build and sell the condominiums. Once that's done, that's basically 
uh, what you have left is sort of a shell entity. Um, but I think Great Lakes could explain the rationale for wanting to do that. Um, I guess our feeling is that it's, it's a reasonable request. It's not going to hinder the city in any way, and it's for purposes that Great Lakes has uh, uh, as part of this project and their corporate structure uh, nationwide that uh, it's necessary for them to do this. So, uh, perhaps, Mr. Emery, if uh, the council would motion to open, to open the floor. floor. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Please. Th thank you. I'm John Emery. I'm the CEO of Great Lakes Companies. Be happy to explain it, Steve. It's even I'll, um, very simply the, the legal entity that was set up to develop and construct and sell the condominiums was a legal entity tied into or a subsidiary of the Great Lakes companies. The condominium sales, quite frankly, have gone fantastic. We expect to close the sale of, i.e., sell all of those condominiums within the next 30 days. And so several of the motions, or the, the two motions that, that are related to Great Lakes tonight, both involve the, the final sale of those condominiums. They're all built, they're all, uh, within three weeks we'll have certificates of occupancy in all of them, and then within a week after that they'll all be sold. The, what, what the city attorney and Great Lakes have worked on is the entity that, that developed those condominiums is owned by seven partners, including myself. As they're sold, those interests all get dispersed. And so what's, what we needed to do, part of which is in relation to we're posting a $2 million letter of credit long term to support the occupancy taxes on the condominiums, is we need to give our banks the, in effect, the collateral for that $2 million letter of credit, which I think goes out, I forget how many years it goes out, but it's a substantial amount of time. Um, all this is doing is taking those net assets of the sale proceeds and distributing to the people that own that entity. And so really, and it, this would have been done we would have thought 12 months from now when we thought the condos were originally going to sell, but they've sold much more quickly than, than they thought we would. So we're ready to get them sold and distributed out. It has absolutely no legal effect or change to any of the city's collateral with us or any of our guarantees with the city. And in fact, our guarantees are personal in addition to being corporate. So it really is a, it's a disbursement of those assets, if you will. Okay. Thank you. Oh, John, before you sit down, could you just clarify one thing? Sure. Why did the company decide to pick up the legal fees? Could you clarify that, please? Uh, absolutely. The, the company picked up those legal fees because the legal fees for this project, they, they came out of the complexity of the project. I, I do appreciate the Citizens Action Committee's comments, by the way, as well, that the, this is a project that's been very successful, but it was terribly, terribly complex. <laughs> The, the complexity of the project is due to the project being there. It's not the city's complexity, it's the project trying to work within a lot of city guidelines in a site that had a lot of environmental challenges, lots of issues, and uh, I, I'm sure most of you have been there. The, the prop, I was talking to somebody earlier, property is actually already running very well. The condo is getting ready to be sold. That complexity is a pro we view as a project cost. So as developers, there was no question in our mind that that's a cost of the project. If the city had come to us um, when, when we first, when that cap came out, the condos were not even definitely going to be built. They were an option. Great Lakes had an option to lease that land from the city and build those condos. We weren't even sure we could do it. They weren't sold. They weren't reserved. And so that's what drove those legal bills is the complexity through no, you know, the no, no cause or fault at all of Great Lakes or the city. It's a project cost. That's a 50 some million dollar project down there. And I assure you our legal bills um, were over budget much more than the city's were. And so that's, you know, unfortunately, but, you know, but, you know a successful project, that's the way, it's a 50 some million dollar project and we're very happy with the way it turned out. And as you can tell when you walk through it, the great thing about Great Lakes, that project opened the day it was scheduled to open from planning a long time ago. And that's because we just don't stop. And when you do that a lot of times, you will drive your cost up a little bit. But what would the cost have been if we missed the golf tournament and didn't get the project open? I mean, what's the cost of that to the condominium buyers and to, and to the resort and to the city and occupancy taxes? So the way we look at it, that extra, I think, is $230,000 was getting the project open on time, effectively, in time for this summer. And it opened, I think, June 8th was our, our grand opening event down there. So 
I'm sorry, it's a long explanation of, of why we're, we're paying this. We're working as a team, we overcame all those issues. Absolutely, we could not have done this without the help of the city and the council, and um, I mean, that project is a partnership project, there's no doubt about it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. John, could you give me your last name, please, for the record? Absolutely, it's Emery, E-M-E-R-Y. Thank you. Okay, would you call the roll, please, if there's no other discussion? Okay, call the roll, please. Oh, all of them to go. I'd like to ask Mr. Emery about your advertising. My husband and I had the chance to go to the state of Washington, and on the way back, um, I started to look for billboards and all that that were saying Blue Harbor and things like that from um, like Milwaukee and from Madison and up and through Green Bay to see if there were any um, signs that would, you know, uh, announce Blue Harbor. And I haven't seen anything. And I've, I was thinking what that's really um, a disservice to Blue Harbor that you're not advertising something like this on, Blue, uh, on the billboards that say come to Sheboygan and see Blue Harbor and the water parks and everything. I, would, I will absolutely check on that when I go back. I know that we had over a million dollars in our marketing budget just to get the resort open. A lot of that was spent on TV and radio ads in Milwaukee and Chicago. I'd be happy to check on. Billboards a lot of times take time to get because there's just not that many of them a lot of times where you want to be. And so you have to wait for somebody else's lease to expire. And then you go in. Typically, we are a very, we use a lot of billboards because we, we go after the, the, the retail leisure customer. So I'd be happy to ask the question when I go back to the office. And assure me, we are as motivated as anybody in this room because to get I think this thing it would well be marketed. Nice to say, come to Sheboygan and see Blue Harbor and, you know, and appreciate what the city has done and what you have done. And there doesn't seem to be any of, of, of that, you know. And I saw all these billboards as I was going, you know, through all the states. As my husband, husband and I traveled by car, and you saw all of these different things being advertised, and I was looking forward to seeing something when I came into Wisconsin, and I didn't. We're working, in fact, in Washington State, you may be able to see something in the next year or so that will help you understand. So we're looking out there as well. But did the city of Sheboygan, there's a Toyota commercial now that says Sheboygan in it. I don't know what the city did to get in there, but it was the most amazing thing the first time I saw that commercial, because I'm thinking of Blue Harbor, but I do appreciate your comments, and we are happy to take them. I mean, we're a you know, local company that's built this business up, but the, if a consumer isn't getting it, I love those comments, I'll go back and check on it. Okay, thank thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just a quick comment about process with legal language. If we simply stay with the word authorizing, it might be appropriate for a report to come back to the council if, in fact, when something is authorized, it's not signed. Fine. That should handle the situation. It's fine. <coughs> Alderman Warner. Well, thank you, Honor. Just, just for, uh, uh, for Blue Harbor, uh, John, I believe we saw some really great commercials on TV. I think you're doing a good job on that end. Look great. And uh, turn on the TV and you have Blue Harbor and Sheboygan advertised. It's nice to see. So, great. Thank you very much. <coughs> if you read USA Today last week, they mentioned the convention center, Blue Harbor in there, and the statement is if the United States would have created as many jobs as the area in Sheboygan County has in the past year, they'd have four billion jobs created, something like that. <laughs> so we're doing a good job. That's fantastic. I'll tell you, the, the conference center facilities are absolutely fantastic. We're so pleased to have that facility to work with down there. Just, good. We, we couldn't be happier about it. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> no other discussion, would you call the roll please? Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Segal? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Alderman Stefan? Uh, yeah, I'd also like to pull S5 1 forward. I would move to put the resolution upon its passage. We have a motion and a second before us. S. 5-1, under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Um, Bonet. Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Segal? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. Thank you, John.
Yeah, yeah, good evening. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Authority to take oh, redevelopment authority needs to take the votes too. Yes, please. On uh, both uh, motions as well. <coughs> I, I believe yeah, Carol's got the the. Good point. Then, uh, Mike, uh, you also need to have the redevelopment authority take action on the consent uh, to approve the, uh, the consent document also. Okay, so I have a motion. I have a motion. I have a Jack Lewis. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion? Here you are. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same. Thank you. 67. Thank you. Thank you. Just move to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I'll entertain uh, a motion to adjourn the uh, redevelopment authority. I can't adjourn the council. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I'd like to. Uh, We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. We'll just go with consent. Just go with consent. Yeah. Okay. Jim. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to pull document 630. RC by Public Protection and Safety recommending entering into an agreement with Sheboygan Area School District relative to providing the public school system with local school liaison officers from the Sheboygan Police Department. Totally supportive of the agreement. Uh, you want to put that agreement. on the floor as a motion? Yes, please. Motion. Second. Okay, go ahead. Under discussion. Um, my question is um, the dollars. I'm totally supportive of the program but uh, believe that we, in fact, pay more than 50% of the costs, in effect, by virtue of uh, the fact that students from the schools, both middle and high school, are from beyond the city, and so we're paying for part of them unduly. I'd like some conversation about that. Okay, we'll get to that. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. Uh, this resolution regarding the school resource officers was discussed in Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting this past uh, Wednesday, and it passed unanim unanimously in that committee. This continues the school resource officers program, and at the same, it's at the same level as it was last year, with the city paying 50% of the costs and the school district paying the remaining 50% of the costs. I believe this council has been given a wealth of information regarding the value and, and impact of the school resource officers program. The ability and availability of these officers in our schools is very important to the health and safety of our children. With the changed world we live in, it is very important that students have access to law enforcement officers that are in tune with them and their surroundings. The facts across the nation speak for themselves, and this program, the School Resource Officers Program, is not only needed, but critical in this day and age. We have had many discussions about the financing of this program. Every year, the same issues come up. The even split has worked out, but there's a feeling that the city taxpayers are paying a disproportionate amount of the cost since they pay both city, the city costs and part of the school costs. That is something that does concern me and I'm sure it concerns others. The school district's budget runs from July 1st to June 30th. Alderman Ryan Fleisch is on, our, is on the Public Protection and Safety Committee and he appraises us of that. So we're on a little bit tighter schedule here and we also have Alderman Perez here who's president of the school board and he can maybe shed some light on that. But the feeling in the committee is, is that we need to move this forward. There's not enough time to impact their budget at this time, and I do think it is something we should look at. But 
as all contracts go, you can always look at making some changes if necessary. And I guess I would ask Alderperson all Perez, as president of the school board, that perhaps he can help us out with this by bringing this issue back to the school board. I, I, I recommend we pass this as it is, but to bring the funding issue back to the school board and to discuss the equity and funding that city residents pay a disproportionate amount of those costs. And may, perhaps they can find some answers, and if, if they can't do anything about it this year, perhaps they could do something about it next year. So I think we should pass it along with everything else. It's a good program. It's very well needed in the city of Sheboygan. It's helped hundreds, if not thousands, of kids over the years. And uh, this council saw the presentation to the committee as a whole by the school resource officers. You know the value. You know the, the impact they have on these students and their lives. If we can get prevention in there ahead of time, I think it's very, very important. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Thank you, Mayor. Oh, I guess I'd speak in support of the, uh, the program itself, being that we have the support of the school, we have the support of the police department, and we have what I consider to be a perfect example of shared services. And when we get a good example of shared services, we always seem to want to question who's paying the nickel more and the nickel more than the other person. Uh, that's why you never have shared services. You're never going to have an equal split. It's just not possible. It's not financially possible. And quite frankly, this is why we've never been able to share anything, because it's always who's paying more, who's controlling more, who makes a decision, who doesn't make the decision. But I know this is, this is the second time I hear the school district doesn't pay an equitable share or equal share. Nobody has bothered to talk to our superintendents or our assistant uh, superintendent of finance to get the correct numbers. We're all up here conceiving numbers to satisfy our own anxieties, and nobody has the right numbers. People have numbers, but nobody's bothered to double check them. And I invite anybody who has some concerns, call the school district, let's sit down, talk about it, and end this, because all we're doing is creating little stories and fantasies. But this is an excellent example of shared services. Don't do away with it. And then talk to me about shared services with the county when you have a good example here. A little one, but a very effective one, and one that lasts a long time, and one that we need. Alderman Perez, when they had the presentation up here on Committee Hall, remember we asked to get some kind of info back, I think it was from uh, Principal Calabrese, on how the program is working, uh, and some of the statistics, Mr. you know, the number Calabrese of kids we're helping? Exactly. Assistant Superintendent of we, Human Resources. Uh, okay, we never saw that. Do you have that? Can you get it to us? Well, I can get it to you. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Stefan. I guess I, I kind of fall in the middle. I agree with both sides. I do see it as a valuable thing, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but we pay, and then the school board pays 50% back. You know, So, I mean, it is an example of sharing, but I think it's, it's not really up to them. They're paying their half. It's probably incumbent upon us to work out a deal with the town of Wilson, the town of Sheboygan, or whatever. You know, if it's 50-50, their 50% is covered because they're getting their school taxes from all those people. It's really incumbent upon us to... And I, I guess I could ask Attorney, Attorney McLean. I guess I'd be all for passing this tonight and then, you know, figuring out what it is and then see if we can work on an equitable agreement with the other municipalities. But I really don't see it as far as on the school board side. They're paying their 50% to us, so it's really an issue with us and the towns and stuff. But I do think it's a worthwhile program. Okay. Oh. Go ahead, Alderman Trent. Thank you, Mayor. Just a quick question. Being that this, uh, this item and the next item deals with the school district, uh, Steve, do I need to abstain? There's no monetary interest at all, but I am president of the school board. Um, maybe one. Okay, thank you. I will oh. abstain. Okay. Alderman <coughs> Peterson. Yeah. I think, uh, Alderman Chris, I'm the one that raised the question. The only issue I have is we pay <coughs> half the cost and then, we have, then the school board pays half the cost. But the city taxpayers pay 70% of the school district tax. So in effect, we're paying 85% of the cost. And I'm not sure, I don't know the proportion of students that come out of the town of Wilson or the town of Sheboygan, but, but I think that's a question that's worth asking. And, and uh, it just seems to me that, that uh, you know, we should pay our fair share. I think right now, from what I know, we're perhaps paying more than our fair share. Agree with the program, we'll support the program, but I just have a question about how it's funded. <clears throat> you know, maybe, maybe we could utilize our officers uh, wiser. Uh, throw this out, food for thought. Alderman Perez, Alderman Warner. I guess both of you guys are sort of leading this charge. Is maybe look at uh, rotating our officers. We have four liaison officers, 
I know it's a number crunch. We're trying to get people on the street, officers on the street, utilizing one a day per week out on the street. That would solve some of our problems with having officers on the street too and rotate it through the schools, if it makes sense. Um, you guys might, might want to discuss that too. Okay. Alderman Stephan. <coughs> I don't know, I'm, the deputy chief is here, he could probably address that. But I actually did talk to a constituent the other day who told me that exact same thing. They had a burglary in a garage, you know, that was not on school property, but it was two blocks away, and the liaison officer was doing it just because he was close by and he sure. was there. So I know they do do that in certain cases, you know, they do. I don't know if it's a set number or something, but they do take calls that are in that area, even if they don't have any relation to this. And that's good. We should be doing that. Right. Okay, we have a motion before us. Uh, this is consent agenda. We're doing it separately. Call the roll. Uh, Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Same. Peterson? Aye. Reinflesch? Aye. Segal? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 abstain. Motion carried. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss you? Yes. I, Aye. Manny. <laughs> sorry. Let's take 631 right away also. Recommending accepting the drainage easement for the Sheboygan Area School District for drainage purposes in, under, and along part of their property. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that the uh, report of a uh, committee uh, be put upon its passage and the resolution be put upon its passage. I'm sure the report of committee be accepted and the uh, resolution be passed. Okay. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Uh, 12 ayes, 1 abstain. Motion carried. All right, back to the consent agenda. Alderman Warner. <laughs> Well, thank you, Your Honor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted. All resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. Moved and seconded. All ROs be accepted and filed. Resolutions, substitute resolutions, or substitute ordinances, excuse me. RCs be accepted and adopted. An ordinance be put up under passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. I do have some comments on 620 and 621, if I may. Okay. Your Honor, these two documents deal with the increase in ambulance service rates by Orange Cross Ambulance. And I think it needs to be pointed out that Orange Cross has raised its rates 18% in a year and a half. Right after we signed the contract, they shot up 8%. Then 5% and 5 months, and 5 five months later. And another 5% on July 1st of this year. In fact, and, and we really can't stop it because that's the way the contract is written. In fact, Orange Cross rates have risen 39.7% in the past seven years, 31% in just the past four years. Now that their rates are among the highest in the state, I hope they do not raise them again this year. I think we must seriously consider this when the next opportunity comes up to make some substantive changes to the service and the contract. It's working great in Manitowoc and it would work great in Sheboygan. Thank you. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a question about 612. Okay. Um, about wood burning furnaces. Now, the way I read it, tell me if I'm right or wrong, um, no longer wood burning stoves allowed in garages or anything like that. Is that what you mean? No. Alderman Bowman? Thank you, Your Honor. This is basically does state that as an outdoor furnace, in other words, something that would be placed in a person's yard, and they would put like an eight hours charge of log inside and the heat would be transferred into the home. This is the type of thing that you mainly would see in rural communities out in uh, uh, rural areas, more so than in a, in a city uh, setting. So it is not referring to a wood burning stove in a garage? No. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, go ahead. Yes, uh, Alderman Montemayor, 612 is actually just directing a public hearing be held. The document 
the ordinance is a zoning Six ordinance minutes. that requires a public hearing, so that won't be acted <coughs> on tonight, the document itself. Thank you. Alderman Stefan. Uh, yeah, I'd like to have some discussion and answer some questions on 622, and I guess 623 goes with it. Those are the uh, documents from the Skybox Sports Pub re <coughs> requesting what I understand to be a tent for the PGA event and to have a tailgate party. And I guess, you know, am I correct in the way I'm reading this is that we're kind of like moving forward with it, but we're not getting final <coughs> approval until they get the permits? Because I'm concerned, obviously, in the past, we've, you know, the bid district does similar things with events. The Liars Club does, but all the money goes to charity. You know, this is a private enterprise making money, and we should close down the street for them. I mean, you look up and down Michigan Avenue and Indiana Avenue, every bar owner is going to be here saying, yeah, I want to put a tent up that week too. And I just think we're, you know, it's going to be a very slippery slope. And are we prepared to say, no, we're doing it for this one, but we're not going to do it for this one. We're going to do it here and not here. Because you look at, you know, a lot of those streets have the exact same situation where they have a bar in the corner and across the street is a business that maybe has front access and doesn't really need the side of the building. I mean, I don't know if even the, if the, the business on the other side was even consulted. Uh, that's what I'm mostly concerned with is the church behind this building. I don't know how that's going to affect the Sunday morning traffic if they have a tent up Saturday night. I know they're limiting it till 10 o'clock. I guess I just want to know how far down the road we are with this process. And I guess I want to hear from the council because I really think if you approve this one, you know, Katie, bar the door because they're all going to come ask you. And I don't know how you can pick one and say, that's okay here, but we're not going to do it in any other ones. Okay. That's my concern. Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Your Honor. I also had concerns on the same two items, 622 and 623. And as an example to where it states that uh, they, would want, they wanted to erect the tent and close the street, I mean, does this mean that they're going to put holes in the pavement? I mean, how are they going to get this tent up without poles and supports? How would they repair the holes? I mean, are they calling diggers hotline? These are all questions that would need to be answered too, you know, when it's uh, time to put up this tent if they would be given permission to do so. Okay, Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I agree with Alderman Stefan. That's the exact question that, uh, that was asked during the licensing committee is what happens when the next 100 people come in and want to close streets too. Uh, but while we're at this, uh, I see that the licensing committee approved it so did public protection and safety. But then we go back to the VFW post-1230, licensing committee approved it, public protection denied. What in the world happens now? And what is the rationale for agreeing one to one and denying the other one when they're both asking to close down part of the street? It doesn't make sense to me. Would somebody explain that to me? Alderman Warner. I think our in regards to the difference between St. Clair Avenue and the Skybox and the VFW, we wanted to approve the VFW one in public protection, and we could have approved it and sent it forward, but when they applied for the block party permit, the ordinance would not allow them to have a block party on a major thoroughfare, which Union Avenue is. So rather than pass it to the police and make the police chief deny the VFW its block party, what we did is the committee said, look, it doesn't make any sense to to give them permission to close the street Union Avenue, which is a major thoroughfare and under our ordinance not allowed to be closed off for such an event, we bit the bullet and denied it. I'm a supporter of the VFW and if I could have, we would have. In the case of the Skybox, the issue that came up there in our committee, the first item on there, and, and Alderman Bonet can speak on that, is actually an extension of, of premises for their license so that they can have adult beverages on the street, but they have to have a secured area for it in public protection and safety, we looked at it as it's a un unique event. The city hasn't been through anything like this before. We've never had a PGA coming here with the Blue Harbor Resort there before or anything this size, probably going all the way back to when we had bratwurst days. And I think this is going to be much better run than some of the problems we had back in the 50s and 60s with bratwurst day. So we looked at this as a unique opportunity to kind of test it. Everyone has to come in first. If it's a bar, they have to get an extension of premises to to have adult beverages outside. The next thing they have to do is they want to close off the street is they have to come to public protection and safety and get permission to do so where the traffic sergeant and the police department and fire department looks at it and says is it, is it uh, going to impar impair public safety or anything like that. And that's why you can't have it on a major thoroughfare because that is, is for emergency vehicles. That's why they're designated such. In the case of the Skybox St. Clair Avenue and that little piece from 8th and 9th, they have, and in each one of these instances when they have a block party, 
They have to end at 10 p.m. And they also have to get permission from all the people that are impacted. The church, the, the people that live in the apartment, uh, the bike, bike and ski across the street it is. Uh, all those people have to be, have to sign on a dotted line and say okay. If they don't, there's no party. And in this case, we did, we did suggest that it was a little different only because of the PGA coming to town. And we thought, well, if this can be a test case, we'll see if it works, we'll know. And that's sometimes how we're trying to be a little flexible. If something is a problem, we'll know about it. And the police department actually does have the power to turn them down and shut them down and as far as this reclosing or anything under police powers if need be. So the city's pretty well protected that way, but we really wanted to let the VFW have theirs also and it just didn't work out that way because of that major thoroughfare. You can't have them on A Street, you can't have them on Calumet Drive, you couldn't have them on Taylor Drive, uh, North Avenue, Geely Avenue, Superior Avenue, uh, probably Seaman Avenue, probably most of the snow emergency route, 7th Street, so it's issues like that. Alderman Warner, I, before you sit down, I did have an opportunity to speak to the VFW today and they do have alternative uh, method of trying to work this out with us, so I wish you'd take another look at that for yes, them, please. and we did talk to, uh, I talked okay. to uh, former alder person Wenninger, right. whose husband is involved with that VFW post ball. Exactly, he's here this evening. And she called me after he called her and, yep. and told me what their problems were and that they were looking at some other issues. I think so you can work that out, though, if we sit down with them. There could be something, yeah. They're going to look at extending it onto the sidewalk and using a parking lot. Right. They have a relationship with the church over there. I believe it's St. Paul's, I want to say. I'm not sure. I think so. But uh, they're working it out. Good. So hopefully they're going to have a good event there also. I, I just think that because of the, the special circumstances, we should let this see what, and, and how it goes. And if it works out, it works out. And if not, we'll know. Well, this is going to be a unique summer. You're going to have a lot of people here and a lot of things going on. So let's try and make everything work we can to yes. make it gel. It's going to be a learning, a learning curve for the city as well as everyone else out there. And we want to allow... Uh, responsible business owners to take advantage of it. One problem that they had was the 10 o'clock closing time. They originally wanted to stay open until 1 a.m. Well, you can't do that with a block permit, which is probably good for some of the neighbors and the people who would have to listen to the music until 1 a.m. Then we'd have the same issue we have when events want to stay in, in, uh, at the lakefront or in Kiwanis Park until 12 or 1 and we go through that again. So I think this will work and we should give it a shot. All of my friends. Thank you, Mayor. I am all in favor of uh, granting permission. I voted in favor uh, of both uh, during the licensing committee. Uh, I, I think it is a unique situation, and I think we should, we should allow I'm all for fa in favor of being less restrictive when it comes to uh, uh, unique cases like this. But I guess what I was asking is, what are we going to do when one committee says no and one committee says yes? Do we, do, we then, do we vote against the committee who said yes and vote in favor of the committee who said no? or which prevails in this case. We have one committee licensing saying yes, we have public protection saying no. Mm -hmm. Alderman Bonet. Well, thank you. And, 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 Your Honor, if I may, and, and when we did this, I wasn't aware of what uh, Alderman Warner said, that uh, the main thoroughfares aren't allowed this particular right. use. We did have attorney, Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams here, and he never made any mention of it himself, so we he just assumed, we just Good. assumed that that was okay to do. So that's where okay. we came from. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I don't believe this is an issue because uh, what was addressed by two different committees are two different issues. What was addressed by my law and licensing committee is strictly the question of the licensing function, not the public protection safety issue, which was addressed during the, concerning the thoroughfares and addressing issues on that. So, you know, from the licensing function, that's what we were evaluating on whether it was something we would permit, not whether or not concerning the closing of the streets. I think that was a distinction between the two. Okay. I mean, that's the reason why I have two, a dual referral. Thank you. Before I move on, Steve, do you have any comments? Uh, well, I just, I would say in answer to Alderman Perez's comment about uh, what does the council do if you've got, you know, referrals back and uh, opposing uh, recommendations from two different committees, that's, that's why they're recommendations to the council. Uh, uh, and that gives the full council the opportunity to discuss the issue and decide which, which way to go and what the issues were that were addressed in the various committees and you know why they said this and that. that and that's exactly what you're doing tonight. I'd also mention that VFW document is on later on tonight and I believe that event is going to be the 3rd of July or something and 
uh, if anything's going to be done, it will need to be done tonight unless you want to hold another special meeting. And I, I, I know you all love special meetings. <laughs> That's all. Alderman Rainflash. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess first, the VFW issue. Um, I don't want it to sound like we just came up and said, no, we won't do it. Uh, there was a lot of discussion within that committee meeting. Uh, we offered some suggestions at that point in time. Hopefully they were amenable to those suggestions. Uh, I agree that we did want them to hold it. We're certainly supportive of the VFW, uh, but it wasn't just cut and dry, no thank you, and there's the door. It was something that was a lot of conversation and a lot of ideas were being thrown out about how they could do it. But also when it came down to on the street, we simply couldn't do it being a major thoroughfare. Second of all, in terms of the issue uh, for the Skybox, private businesses making money versus uh, events that allow charity, uh, we're going to have hundreds of thousands of people coming in this year for one particular event, for one particular weekend. Uh, the establishments of the city of Sheboygan, I don't think, have any idea what's going to hit them and how much opportunity they have uh, arriving uh, in, in, at their doorsteps. Uh, my concern is that we don't have simply enough space for them, uh, a lot. Uh, so yeah, there may be a lot of people uh, kicking the door in to want to do the same thing as well, uh, but that's what we're elected to do. We're elected to make the tough decisions of who can and who can't, uh, based on sound reasons, based on fair reasons. Uh, but I want to create reasons why businesses do locate in the city of Sheboygan and not the towns of uh, Sheboygan or town of Wilson, that we do show that we are able to provide them with solutions to make money as well, uh, as well as fitting in our neighborhoods as well. So I welcome some of those uh, other people who are also would like to make some additional money from the uh, groups coming here to witness the PGA. Uh, I look forward to hearing their presentations. Thank you. Alderman Sagali. Uh, yes, uh, I am all in agreement with the PGA, but also it's listing here the tailgate parties um, request during Green Bay Packer season. Now, is this also going to be pertain to their tailgate parties that they can um, uh, uh, corner off streets and things like that. I know it says it's being under investigation and then exceptions and modifications are being investigated concerning the tailgate parties, but what are they investigating? Or is it going to be the same as what the, because there are many bars in this town hold tailgate parties on Packer Sundays. So, I mean, are we going to give them something that we don't give to the other bar owners here in town? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Alderman Warner. Okay, actually, Alderman Bonet could probably answer this just as well as he's chairman of that committee. But we did talk about that issue in public protection also. So if Alderman Bonet would like to explain the issue regarding tailgate parties, and it's on their premises property they own. It's in a parking lot. It's not someplace else. So, Thank Alderman you. The, the way we evaluate it was going to be on a case-by-case -case scenario. I mean, it was not going to be a car launch across the season. I and mean, there were some legal aspects of it. The fact is that you have to cordon off and not allow minors in there all the way through the entire season if it was strictly upon based on the Packer season and they couldn't even let a minor walk across the parking lot if you go by the guidelines of the state statutes. So from that standpoint, what we're looking at is a case by case and they have to apply each individual time. Okay. Alderman Vanderwell. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as far as opening up the floodgates, we have enough check and balances in place that we can open up the floodgates and just handle each case case by case. We have lawn licensing, we have public protection and safety, and we have the block, block party ordinance. And each one has their own tool that I don't think we'll have a problem with this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Back to Alderman Ringflesh. Uh, just to clarify the Packer Sunday issue within public protection and safety. The issue at hand was do we uh, agree to let them uh, apply for a change of premise uh, to regarding their land that they own, they wanted to do their businesses on, and uh, Bonet, as discussed, said there's a lot of legal issues that they're looking at. But the vote on the public protection safety was do we think, are we going to allow them in terms of public protection safety? We think it's a good idea. If they want to, they'll go right ahead. But it's still another committee it has to go to before it's approved. Okay. Last one, all them in order. Uh, speaking back to the other two documents, now that we get back to Which ones? Uh, uh, 622 and 623. All right, let's stay on those concerned to those, uh, So I want to make sure I'm not speaking on these too often. Right. Uh, the thing is, is that's the committees are set up that way, as Alderman Perez noted. Uh, you can have this problem on the floor sometimes, but that's because that's really what you want. So you want those checks and balances, and when you want people to argue in committee, committees to come with 
some resolution that they think is right and come to this council and get everybody on the council or at least a majority to agree with them. And I think that is a very important part of it. Uh, we have some tonight that are going to three committees. Uh, they're going to, I think there's one to public <coughs> works, public protection, and transit, and then so you can have a lot of different things. So you got one going to a commission and two committees, and there's other ones on there like that, and we do have that all the time, and it's probably healthy. Okay. There's another discussion. Would you call the roll on? There is no motion on the floor. This was just talking on right. consent. Consent agenda. It's still on consent. Anyone else on consent? Okay. I think we talked consent to death already, so <laughs> we'll move on. Take the roll, please. For the consent? For the full consent. Okay. Peterson. Aye. Ren Fleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Perez. Aye. 13 ayes. Okay, that excluded 624, 25, and 26, which we're holding, and we took care of 631 and 32 separately. No, 631 no. and 30 separately. Okay, 633 through, through 35 to be referred. 636 will I over till July 19th. 637 through 54 to be referred. Six fifty-five. Uh, okay, hang on a minute. Six fifty-five. Alderman Stefan authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in a matter of Cynthia L. Predator versus the city of Sheboygan and authorized payment for said services. Alderman Stefan. I would move the resolution to put upon its passage. We need a suspension. Uh, we need a suspension, sir. I guess I'll request for suspension then. Do we have any objections to suspension? Not proceed. Um, excuse me. One word. Could you just explain why we need a... Of course, I, I have no idea. <laughs> the attorney could probably... <laughs> yeah. uh, other than Renfleisch, perhaps could it... Okay, I, sure. I mean, I can explain it, but the, this was brought up at Risk Management Committee. Right. And, and that's what I was going to next, all of it in Actually, I buzzed in to make the motion for suspension. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and then I was going to refer my, my any questions to uh, Attorney McLean. The, uh, this is a lawsuit that we were served with. Uh, it's a, uh, an accident at, uh, at an intersection where they're alleging that the city was negligent in failing to uh, uh, prevent the sign being obstructed by, uh, by leaves from a street tree. And uh, we felt that the sooner we can get outside counsel, you know, you've got 45 days in which to answer the complaint in order to get the outside counsel uh, on board and get an answer filed timely, it was important to uh, have the council suspend the rules so they can start on as soon as possible. Okay, so that's... This is the same law firm that we uh, typically use for handling our insurance claims. Uh, Olson Clot, Gunderson and Conway, uh, Sheboygan law firm, who's served the city well in the in the past on a number of cases. Okay. That's your explanation for suspension. Okay. Now. Move to put the resolution upon the passage. We have a motion before us in a second, under discussion. Was there a, did you act on the suspension? Was there any objection? No, he just questioned it. That was it. Okay. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. All roll call, please. Uh, Renfleisch. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 657 by Alderman Stefan, Berg, Manny, and Montemayor, establishing the monthly premium McCullivan rates for the medical benefits. Medi medical benefit plan effective for January 2005 coverage. Alderman Stefan. I would move the resolution be put upon this passage. Okay. Move to second a resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. <coughs> Alderman Rainford. It's probably a very small thing, uh, but be it for the resolve that monthly premium equivalent rates for the medical benefit plan that will be charged 
to retirees and Medicare, do we need to correct the typo or leave it as is? It'll be a typo correction. Thank you. Okay. To another discussion, would you call the roll, please? Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 658 and 59 will lie over. 660 through 65 to be referred. 666, by law and licensing, recommending de denying beverage operator's license 6355, based on failure to include all relevant convictions on his application and the concern with his long record that may indicate a habit of law breaking. Alderman, <coughs> thank you. Uh, let's make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. We have a motion before us and a second under discussion. Um, this is recommending the denial of beverage opera operator's license number 6355 for James Schrader based on failure to include all relevant convictions on his application and the concern with his long record that may indicate a habit of law breaking, in essence, habitual. Okay, there's a gentleman here. Speak. Um, is James Schrader here? James Schrader. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Mayor. James Schrader is not present. Okay. There's not a discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Warner? <laughs> that was an aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 667 and 68 will go together, and that is by law and licensing and public protection and safety. And one's recommending to pass the ordinance, I believe, and one's recommending to file. <laughs> so, Council, this is for VFW Post 1230. Alderman Flesh. To avoid confusion, I'll ask for a division of the vote. <laughs> Pardon? I'll ask for division of the two items. Okay. Uh, mainly because an I vote would, I won't say denial on the same event as saying we approve the same event. I think for the record it might show it a little bit, little bit clearer. May I ask you something, is that, Alderman Rainflesh? Has anyone spoken to the VFW about changing their request of not using the street but using the parking lot, sidewalk, and other? We discussed that in the committee, but I don't, I'm not sure if anything had come back, back from that since then. Okay, I, I believe there's some discussion we should have before we deny anything tonight, so hang in there. Okay, Alderman Pony. I was going to make a uh, motion, Your Honor, to open the floor to the representative of the VFW. I believe they have a proposition. Second? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Gentlemen, whoever wants to step up the microphone. Good evening, Council. I'm Jerry Winninger on 2021 Camelot Boulevard. Uh, I'm involved in the um, permit that we requested permission. However, do we, we did not know of the ordinance. What we have decided we could do, which we still have to have permission, is go to the parking lot and the sidewalk and do our, our same thing. However, we still have to have permission for the sale of beer. So not nobody, we'd either be fenced in and we would be on the street, off the street, and we wouldn't be blocking the street. But this is our second, I mean our alternative plan, not the one that we originally planned for, but we could work with that if okay. the council would approve of that. Okay, hang on a minute. Alderman Perez, you had your light going. Did you want to talk well, about Well, is he done? I'll, I'll speak when he's done. You done, Chair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mayor. I guess I, I agree with Alderman Rinfly. I said we divide the questions, but uh, I would ask that uh, we consider uh, 
voting no against denying and in effect granting, but perhaps maybe referring that back to committee so that the VFW has an opportunity to come before They're, us. Pardon me? They don't have time. They don't have time? They don't have we the time on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was a good then, question. Then I, would, then I would ask that the, the council consider voting down 668 and granting 667 as a divided question. Okay. Alderman, you guys are playing games with those lights. Alderman Van Der Weyl. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't see a problem granting the uh, change of premises for the liquor license because we did grant it to begin with, and it's just different than what we thought at that moment, and everybody here was on the committee that granted it the first time would agree, I'm assuming, to grant it for the parking lot and the sidewalk. So we can have that discussion right now. We don't have to send it back to the committee. Right. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Alderman Stephan. Um, well, I have, I have a question. If they just want to change the premises, they're not closing the street anymore, does it even go to public protection and safety? Or it just goes to law and licensing, right? I'm not sure. Do you, do you still want to use the sidewalk, Alderman Warner? <coughs> That was my motion I was going to make. Yeah, I was just going to, we talked about it. I was going to make the motion on both of them, just delete the part that says to include the street. And I think. You're done. Then you're done at 667 at least. And 668 you could vote, like Juan said, yes on one and no on the other one, but then they're both right. the same thing. So I'd make a motion to uh, amend both documents, or I'll amend 667 to delete the words to include the street. Okay, and I believe that's what you wanted. Yes, sir. Okay, we have a motion before us in a second. Under discussion, Alderman Warner, you're still... I, that's what I was going to suggest. Okay. And that way they still have the extension of premises. They just have to, uh, we have changes to sidewalk or something. Okay, thank you for cooperating this evening. Jerry? Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Council. Uh, we need a roll call. Okay, call the roll, please. This is on 667, the amendment first? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, excuse me, Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Segal? Aye. Stefan? Aye. And Van Akron? Aye. 13 ayes. Okay. 668? Now we have to vote on the motion for 667. Right. This is the final motion as amended. Okay. Uh, Bauman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Segali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Thirteen ayes. Okay. Thank you. Motion carried. Thank you for coming in, gentlemen. Yes. 668, we can file. Right? No. Or, no. You don't have to, actually. We have to change something. Oh, that's right. The same yeah. amendment to Six, 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 eight, delete the part that says... Um, yeah, we got to modify it more, but... Uh, delete the part that says request for street closure. That's probably all we need. Mm -hmm. To accommodate a block party permit would be quite okay. Delete the part that says the request for street closure. That would be the amendment. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, under discussion, Alderman Montemayor. For 668, then we have to vote no because they're recommending denying. Our motion can be to accept it. Accept and adopt accept the report. Adopt. I move to accept and adopt and I move to amend. Okay. Okay. So you've changed it from denying to. Right. Okay. Okay. Alderman Rainford. I just want to clarify that his request to change, to amend it to change for the street closure or remove that, also then says uh, re, uh, that we approve. Yes, and, not the, denied. And that was done, correct. Okay. Would you call the roll, please? This is on the amendment. Yes. Uh, Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Segali. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. 13 ayes. 
Motion carried. Alderman Warner. I would just ask Steve uh, if we're deleting, we actually have to delete that whole part, the whole end of it, because we don't want to file this document and deny anything. But should we be replacing in there language that says to allow them to use their, the sidewalk? Because they'd be going out to the curb. Uh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That works. We need to add that verbiage is what I'm saying. So you need to make another amendment. Okay, so on that I would move to amend the document to add the words to allow them to extend out to the sidewalk and to the east and west of their property lines. Second. And they still have to attain a block party permit. It'd be north, yeah, east and west. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you need to obtain a block party permit. You're... Oh, that's fine then. No. Yeah, they don't need I think... Okay. I thought if they take the sidewalk, they had to. Mm -mm. I don't. Okay. I don't I think, think so. Just uh, if you're going to close off the street, I'll know. Okay. Okay. We have a motion before us and a second on amendment. Go ahead. Sir. This is on the second amendment. Second amendment. Bowman. Aye. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carry now. Motion to pass as amended. So moved. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call their own one more time? Sure. Berg. Aye. Bonet. Aye. Manny. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Perez. Aye. Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Sagali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Warner. Aye. Bauman. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. All right. Aye. That should do it. Again, thank you, gentlemen, for coming in. 669 by Public Works, recommending filing documents submitting a communication for classic cruise lines, requesting a permanent dock in Sheboygan South Pier for the summer of 2004. Public Works. Alderman Bauman. Thank you, Your Honor. I promise that this will not take as long. I'd move that uh, we accept and uh, adopt the report of committee, and the reason for that is that it could actually be moved into redevelopment. We need a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second before us. Do I hear any discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 670 by law and licensing recommending suspending Class B and Class B alcohol license, 1972 held by Three Gems, Inc. for a period of 23 consecutive business days to commence the first day after July 1, 2004, that they will be eligible for issuance. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, make motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. At first, you need suspension, I got on here. Um, Why do we need to suspend? No, that's suspend license. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. That's okay. We need a uh, I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Okay. okay. We have a motion and a second before us. Um, this is for uh, Three Gems, which is at 2607 Superior, is um, uh, Christopher Dimoff present? Christopher Dimoff. Your Honor, Christopher Dimoff is not present. Okay. We have a motion and a second before us. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Nacren? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 671 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator license 5602 based on his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application. Alma Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Moved and second to accept and adopt the report of committee under discussion. Uh, is Brandon Doyle present? Brandon Doyle? Brandon Doyle is not present, Your Honor. Okay. We have a motion and second before us. If, no other, if there is no other discussion, would you call the roll? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. 
Bonet. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 672. By law and licensing recommending de denying beverage operator's license 5256 based on his failure to include all relevant convictions on his application. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Okay, we have a motion to second before us under discussion. Uh, is Jamie Farr present? Would you like to speak on your behalf? All right. J Jamie Farr is present, but he's uh, denied the opportunity to speak before okay. us. Alderman Sigali. Um, I have a question on this concerning the fact that you do have someone here that is um, standing by him and saying that he is trying to make the best and trying to correct his life and everything. And isn't there some way that there could be something that could be done that would help him through this, that he would still be able to do something? Um, and bartender-wise and, and to help this um, Cindy Tietzen out. He's trying and I guess I feel that we should not be the ones to try to deny him to get his life straight. Okay, Alderman Mene, you. you want to answer? Um, thank you. Uh, our Alderman Sugali, may, uh, may I ask the city attorney sure. a question, please? Um, may I speak of his record, since it's public record, in what we've been Support, support documentation in the, in the committee? Uh, I think if it relates to, uh, to the, the rationale for denying the license. Yeah. Right. I mean, the basis for the committee making the decision was, I mean, we, in the last 10 years, he's had 21 convictions. He's had um, several, in the, even within the last couple of years, and continuously every year, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2 and 2000, uh, three in 2003, um, you know, we, we've taken a very firm position in the committee to, you know, to looking out for the benefit of, the, you know, of our constituents. And habitual uh, offenders has been something that we've looked over very heavily along with, this is not affecting this situation, another emphasis <coughs> in the committee is drug usage and other drug paraphernalia that does not, isn't relevant to this case, but that is another major focus we've taken on uh, probably more so than it ever has been in the past. Um, the committee was unanimous in its decision in, his, in denying this beverage license, and as a chairman, I support the committee. Okay, Alderman, no? Okay, Alderman Warner. I thank you, Honor. We, we went through something like this some time ago, and uh, I can remember it was a young lady who had the same situation, and what we told her at that time was, if you can stay clean for six months or a year, without doing anything, maybe you could come back to the committee and they'd reconsider. But you have to look at the overall public good. And when an individual has a record like this, perhaps they're in the wrong profession. We have to be very careful who we allow to have these licenses. They are a valuable thing. We realize that it can impact a person's ability to make a living. And so that's really one of the most difficult things. Being chairman of public protection and safety, we had the licensing function in there for three or four years. And uh, Alderman Vanderwiel is, is quite familiar with it also. It's not easy to make these decisions, but the committee looks at that, and when you have a habitual offender, that's, that is, is uh, something that you can consider in denying a license like this, and it's, you just really have to be careful. But unfortunately, sometimes you have to pay for those mistakes you made, and sometimes you have to pay a little longer than you would like to, and I think that's the kind of situation we're in. If, if the individual would stay clean for a year, uh, 12 months, and one day, I think it's something I could reconsider, but I would go with the committee's recommendation. Okay. Alderman Vanderwell. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess it's a question for Mike Warner, because I don't know if my memory serves me right. He can still tend bar, he just can't do it by himself, correct? Correct. Can't close. So, so we're not totally taking his job away. And it's important to remember he can reapply. And, and you know, if he's been clean for six months, we will consider that. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you, Alderman Vanderwiel. You took exactly what I was going to say away. Um, he can't, he is able to function as long as there's a licensed bartender on the premises. The other aspect here is I do hope, I mean, if he had had a lapse in time, I mean, it's right up to 2003, there are three, there are three convictions even recently, and I do hope he does reapply, and I hope to see a, a, a long period of time in which he's not, you know, 
getting in trouble with the law and being convicted. So from that standpoint, I, 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 I'm very empathetic. But we have to go with what we have in documentation. I do appreciate having character witnesses come to our committee. I think it's very important seeing the character because sometimes the record doesn't always speak to what the person's doing with their life. And I hope that he is doing a lot with his life. And we do see him come back because if what she, is, what she has testified is true, I think it would be very advantageous to have him be part of this um, licensing function. OK. Oh, Alderman Scully. I would just like to know, are you now then giving him the option that if he stays clean one year and one day, whatever, that he can reapply? Well, we don't have any. Go ahead. There's no written rule to that effect. It's a point of the judgment of the, I mean, each, it's an individual by individual case that we address these issues. Um, you know, if, he, if there's an individual that comes to us with a series of very serious offenses, would it make a relevant, I mean, if you were serving on that committee, whether or not it was a year and a day or five years in one day, would you want that person um, deciding whether or not your children or your grandchildren or your cousins or aunts or uncles are served in that establishment and they're protected under the guidance of that licensed person? I mean, that, that's a judgment call that the individuals have to make on the committee in looking at the records. Because sometimes there are not a lot of offenses, but they're very serious offenses that are relevant to a license. I mean, we had one of the other people we just denied here did not have nearly as long of a record, but all the instances were um, relevant to the license itself. But, you know, there was only like five violations or convictions. So I, I say it's a case-by-case case scenario. I would say if he does come back to us after a period of time, you know, after a year or so, and he's still got the shining character witnesses that will state that he has, has changed his life, he has not been in trouble with the law, then I'd say, yes, I, I would hope that he would come back to us. Okay. But I won't make a carte blanche statement that's a policy. Because okay. I think it would be wrong to set a policy based on that because it's a it's case-by-case. Okay, as we move on, Alderman Warner. Uh, very quickly, they can always reapply. In any instance, you can reapply okay. all the time. That's not something you can give them an option to. That's their legal right to reapply. They can be denied over and over and over again, but they can reapply. The good thing is they do background checks, and if, if the gentleman is, is able to keep himself on the straight and narrow for 12 months or 13 months, and he comes back and reapplies, they're going to see it because there won't be anything there. And that's all the evidence you need to say, yeah, let's give him a shot. And if he makes a mistake out there again, well, they can always revoke it. Okay. Would you call the roll, please? Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. 13 eyes. Motion carried. 673 by strategic fiscal plan recommending encouraging the state legislator to maintain Wisconsin's traditional constitutional value provided for by allowing municipalities in Wisconsin to better take care of the needs of its residents, businesses, and other institutions, including medical institutions and educational institutions. Alderman Stephan. Uh, I would move that we accept the reporter committee and put the resolution Upon its passage, I request a roll call vote, please. Okay. Yes, second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Alderman Warner. Under discussion, Your Honor, this is something I did prepare something for. Okay. So, I guess I support this resolution. I, I think that the state should allow local units of government and their citizens to make the decisions that impact their community. Who best to decide what is important? Should Madison decide what the needs of Sheboygan are, or should Sheboygan decide her needs? I think Sheboygan should decide her needs. I believe it is very important that we, as a city, maintain local control. Local officials and citizens are best suited to make the decisions on their needs and how they want their communities to live and to exist. I do not think it is local units of government that have created Madison's problems. I think they did that themselves. We need to have it. They say in every aspect of our community, and I think this resolution clearly states that. We should pass this and send it to the governor, the state senate, and the state legislature, 
And let's get back to local control of our future, and I'm sure it will be a bright one. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, we, oh, Alderman Green Flash. Uh, in general, I agree 100% with what, what Alderman Warner said. Um, we talked a lot about this in the past year, that the problems that we're having with our budget, we didn't create necessarily. Uh, it's something that the state created uh, with their fiscal responsibility and they passed the buck to us. They withheld our shared revenue, uh, yet we managed to pretty much balance the budget last year and with a do it without a tax hit increase uh, last year. Uh, the challenge is going to be greater this year. Um, um, I think the problem is on the state level, they need to fix it on the state level. I think we did our duty and we should pat ourselves on the back for doing it last year. Um, where I disagree with him, though, is I don't think we were elected here uh, as a body to represent our local constituents at a state level. I think if they themselves um, feel strong one way or the other, they need to contact their uh, state and uh, representatives, as well as national representatives <coughs> as well. Um, uh, I know my constituents, when, when knocking door to door and talk to them, I talk about my local issues here, and that's what they voted me for. They don't know my my uh, state issues. They didn't vote me for my state issues. Uh, so I'm going to vote no on this, not because I disagree with what Alderman Ald Ald Warner said. I do think that you know we did our job, and, and it's not fair for us to pay the penalty. But on the basis that I have many constituents that may agree with it, and I'm not going to um, cover up what they say and their rights to speak to their representatives. Okay. <clears throat> Alderman Montemayor. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I say amen and double yes to this one. Um, that was, Tabor is probably the worst idea that has come to us for a long time. And I think we as a city should say to Madison, no way, that's bad news for the whole state, especially for our city. Thank you. I see Chief over there shaking his head. How many meetings we attended in Madison on that one, right, Chief? <laughs> you bet. Okay, if there's another discussion, would you call the roll, please? Rinfleisch? No. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye, aye. No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Perez? Peterson, Aye. 12 eyes, one no. Motion carried, <laughs> 674 to be referred. Matter is laid over, 553, 573, excuse me, by Alderman Stefan authorizing the appointment of the study committee to address the concerns of rising health care costs for employers and employees in both private and public sectors. Alderman Stefan. I would move the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 549 and 550. Think we can take them both? No, maybe not. Five, 549 by Alderman. Groff, Stefan, Manny, and Montemere authorizing a transfer of funds for a police department community policing donation. Alderman Stefan. I would move the resolution to be put upon its passage. Can I take 550 also? You may. I would move the both resolutions to be put upon its passage. We have a motion to second before us for both resolutions under discussion. <clears throat> Hearing none, would you call the roll? Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. Manny, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Perez, Aye. Peterson, Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 675 RC by Public Works recommending filing communication from Tom Hansen regarding a tree in front of his residence that needs to be taken out. Can be accepted. Moved and second, report of committee be accepted and adopted under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 676, <coughs> RC by Public Works recommending entering into an agreement for public improvements between Lee Realty of Sheboygan, Inc. and the City of Sheboygan for provision of public improvements in the, settle in the settlement at Lost Creek subdivision. Alderman Pauling. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I'd move that we accept the report of committee and pass the attached resolution. Second. Moved and seconded, we accept and adopt the RC and pass the resolution. Under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, would you call the roll? Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Winfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 677 RC by Public Works recommending, recommending entering into agreement for replacement of monitoring wells and groundwater sampling at the Harbor Center, South Pier District. Go ahead, Alderman Bowman. Thank you again, Your Honor. I move that this report of committee also be accepted and adopted and the attached resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second that uh, RC be accepted and adopted. Resolution be put upon its <laughs> passage. Under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll? Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carried. 678, we'll go to Public Works. Steve, other matters? 679 is an ordinance granting Joseph Holman and Sons Real Estate Corporation its successors and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of North 8th Street and Wisconsin Avenue, located at 804 North 8th Street in the city for the purpose of having an outdoor seating area. City plan. 680 is communication from charter communication regarding new channels being offered on their digital cable service. And that will go to finance. Alderman Montmere. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before we adjourn, because I know it'll happen quickly, when is our next meeting? Tuesday the 6th or Monday the 12th? Tuesday or what? the 6th. Thank you. Welcome. Move to second adjourn under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye.